प्रतिभूति बाजार में निवेश बाजार जोखिमों के अधीन है निवेश से पहले सभी संबंधित दस्तावेजों को ध्यान से पढ़ें how exactly does compounding work and why does compounding enrich investors so powerfully stocks for 10 years or more uh, allows uh, you know the power of compounding to play out by letting the winning stocks in the portfolio to run right so uh, over a longer period of time the portfolio becomes dominated by winning stocks while losing stocks essentially underperformers uh, you know because they keep on declining and eventually they become smaller and smaller Uh, as as a portion of your total portfolio mm. to the point that their contribution to the overall portfolio return will become almost inconsequential mm. Hi there my name is Saurav Mukherjee and it's my privilege to welcome you to the second episode of our podcast series Guru Mantra with Saurav I work for Marcellus Investment Managers and it's my privilege to invite a colleague Krishnan who also uh, 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 looks after our investment advisory vertical to join the podcast welcome Krishnan welcome to the second second episode of Guru Mantra now in the first episode we discussed the the importance of allocating to equities we highlighted that equities is the only asset class in India which gives you returns well in excess of inflation over the last 20, 10 and 20 years in this in this podcast we focus on the benefits of long term compounding so krishna let's begin with the we begin with the the, the question on uh, on how early should an investor start with equities and what is the typical period of time someone who enters stock that stock market should stay invested in the in indian shares sure so uh, as we discussed in uh, the last podcast it's uh, it's extremely important uh, you know for nearly all indian investors to have a have meaningful allocation towards equities uh, now since equities like we also discussed are the riskier uh, of you know when you compare to other asset classes uh, they require patience to stay invested to ride out the volatility and to get the full benefit of compounding mm-hmm. of returns right so just to take an example right so uh, you know a compounding of uh, 15% right compounding at 15% uh, with a 1 lakh uh, invested corpus yeah. Yeah. means that uh, you know you know it it would the, the initial in, uh, invested corpus would grow to around 4 lakhs in 10 years amazing and in another 5 years it grows to 8 lakhs and then uh you know another 5 years so that is 20 years it grows to almost 16 lakhs wow so that's the power of compounding so you start with a initial corpus of 1 lakh and you would have grown it to just to 16 lakhs at in 15, 20 years in 20 years wow, compounding at 15% amazing amazing so so folks just let me just reiterate that if you start today so assume for instance we are sitting in 2023 you start today with with 1 lakh investment by 2043 your 1 lakh would have become uh, 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 16 lakhs right and what krishna is describing is the power of long term compounding in case you want to do this quick maths in your head it's called the rule of 72 take 72 divide by 72 whatever rate you are compounding at that's the number of years in which your money will double so if the rate of compounding is 15% 15% is the rate of compounding used by Krishnan in his example 72 divided by 15 is is roughly is roughly 5 years every 5 years your money is going to double and that's that's the power of the indian stock market right you invest in the indian stock market stay invested for 10 or 20 years you'll see your money grow by not 1 or 2x you're seeing your money grow by 14 15 20 x and that's why the stock market becomes a a mode of a, a, a long term compounding now krishnan a typical career in india is 40 45 years so if you can just take this example forward and explain it in the context of retirement planning sure so equities uh, should ideally be part of one's retirement planning right so and this is because the uh, the long term horizon uh, you know which you which one requires for investing in uh, equities uh, is automatically uh, because you know you are basically investing for your retirement you have a good uh 2025 years uh, even for someone who's starting to invest at uh, 30 years mm. uh, you have a good 2025 years till you retire right so it's uh, equity as an asset class is uh, ideally suited for retirement planning and obviously we know that equities uh, compared to other asset classes uh, is the only one which can help you grow your wealth over and above inflation right right, right? so 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 for someone age 30 investing say around 4 lakhs in equities uh, and assuming that again they are just compounding at say 10 12% mm. every year 
uh, roughly comparable to the nifty 50 returns like we discussed yes. over the last decade yes. will end up with approximately 1.2 crores by the time they retire at the age of 60 years so just to tease out the assumptions here for me he's starting at age 30 yes retiring at age 60 60 and he's starting with a corpus of uh he's starting with a corpus of 4 lakhs 4 lakhs and then he's adding more money each year or just the 4 lakhs just the 4 lakhs just the 4 lakhs started at age 60 by, by sorry 4 lakhs starting at age 30 by age 60 that's becoming 1.2 crores unbelievable so again, you see the power of long-term compounding and remember we are not talking about some heroic compounding rate. 12% ki baat kar rahe hai, nifty wali return ki baat kar rahe hai. 12%, 12% compounding from age 30 to age 60 makes your crore pati provided you started with a, a 4 lakh allocation. Now Krishna, let's get into the maths here. Why is this happening? What is, what, how exactly does compounding work and why does compounding enrich investors so powerfully? Sure. So, uh, holding a portfolio of uh, stocks for 10 years or more uh, allows, uh, you know, the power of compounding to play out by letting the winning stocks in the portfolio to run, right? So, uh, over a longer period of time, the portfolio becomes dominated by winning stocks while losing stocks, essentially underperformers, uh, you know, because they keep on declining and eventually they become smaller and smaller. Uh, as, as a portion of your total portfolio mm -hmm. to the point that their contribution to the overall portfolio return will become almost inconsequential mm -hmm. right uh, so the uh, essentially the positive contribution from the winners disproportionately mm -hmm. outweighs the negative contribution from the underperformers uh, uh, so you know again this is hard you know it kind of drives the long term compounding right. of the portfolio so if you take if you take a two stock portfolio sorupeki portfolio if you put 50 rupees in stock a 50 rupees in stock B. So even if stock B goes to zero, but stock A compounds at say 26%, right? Stock A may 50 rupees I put in, 10 years hence that 50 becomes 500 rupees. Correct. I'd put in 100 rupees initially. Out of the 100, I lost half of it overnight. But even then 10 years out, I will end up with 500 rupees because right. one of the two stocks worked out even though the other stock lost out. So, right. so 100 becoming 500 over 10 years, that's a compounded annual CAGR of 18%, right? Correct. 18%. So once again, folks, uh, we discussed in the, in the preceding example, at age 30, you start with 4 lakh investment. At age 60, you're worth 1.2 crores. Why? Because you got 12% compounded, right? Here, I'm giving an example where you get 18% compounded, even though half of your portfolio gets wiped out. Why do you end up with 18% compounding? Because the other half of your portfolio works out nicely. Now, this is this is an example of how compounding works in a diversified portfolio, where some of your stocks don't work, but the rest of the stocks work. So, Krishna, I actually, uh, uh, whilst I was very poor in Hindi in the early years in school, in uh, by, by the time I did my class 10, I was close to the class topper in Hindi. And one of the things I learned that in Hindi, comp compounding is called, compound interest rate is called Chakravarti Vyaj. Wow. So this is an example of Chakravarti compounding, but at a portfolio level, aapko 18% uh, compounding mil hai because aap those stock, mal, the multiple stocks leke portfolio chala rahe ho. Now, any guidance on the period of time people should stay invested? Kaafi log long term investing ki baat karte hai, long term investing kitni saal ki baat kar rahe hai? So, uh, again, uh, you know, for equities, the longer you stay invested, the better. Haji. Right? So, you know, again, if you have a, you know, a horizon of more than 10 years, that's probably the best, but uh, in no case should it be less than five years. Right. Right. So again, uh, if you ask me, I would say, you know, keep, you know, keep invested as long as possible or stay invested as long as possible and keep a, almost an indefinite horizon as much as possible. But, uh, you know, definitely not less than five years. So just to again, put this in another context, if you use the rule of 72, 72, assume KGA, your rate of compounding is say 13, 14%. The rule of 72 uh, uh, will mean 72 divided by 14, 15 over five years, you're broadly giving your chance, broadly giving your money a chance to to double, right? So if you want to see decent returns to investing, at least give yourself a five year horizon. And just to link this to the message from the first podcast, make equities the, the, the chunkiest part of your asset allocation, set aside enough monies to cover your, your next two to three years of expenses, your outgoes, rest of it should go into equities. And when you enter the stock market, give it at least five years. That brings us to the end, end of the second episode of Guru Mantra with Saurabh. Uh, in the third episode, we will get into the, the nitty gritties of, of disciplined long-term uh, investing. Thank you so much for joining us.